I'm at an intersection which is called Decho and this road down here is Decho Soy. Now according to Google Maps there's a bit of um, street art down there so I'm going to have a bit of a wander down there. Now it so happens I'm a little bit parched and there is a pub here so what the hell I'm going in for a beer. here, Dencho uh, intersection. Uh, buddies have got uh, good western food and they've got cold beer. Now it's on a intersection where a lot of tailors are and a lot of massage places so if that's your cup of tea then this is the place for you. And I'm pretty happy here just nursing this beer. Cooling off and I'm going to read up about uh, the next place I'm going to visit which is Harun Mosque. So I'm going to study up before I get there, so when I get there, I know all about it and know what to look for. So times are changing here in Thailand, uh, the cannabis laws have just been changed. It's funny, the amount of times I see, so just sitting here recording the busy video, I just look over there and there's a pot plant of pot. during this time that there was quite a large Muslim community in the area and so this is where they congregated and this is where they lived and this is where we'll find two mosques actually we're going to go and visit two mosques one is called Harun Mosque and the other one is called Ban Ui Mosque now Harun Mosque it was built by a trader's son a Muslim trader's son and his name was actually Harun he was the one that actually settled down. You see, the trader actually had three sons. It was Harun, Utman, and Ishak. Two of the sons followed their, in their father's foot, footsteps and, and traveled. But Harun was the one who stayed put here in Bangkok, in Banrak. So Utman headed for Malaysia, and Ishak, he went to Cambodia. But Harun, raised a family here. He put down roots and made this area here his uh, community, his home. Now the original mosque was actually on prime real estate on the Chow Prao River, um, but it was it was a, quite, a, quite a large site, but it was such a good site that they removed, they actually shifted the mosque, and this is where Custom House was built. And Custom House still stands today, although it's not actually being used. Uh, there, there's future plans for it to become a hotel, but Customs House was a very important place in um, Bangkok's history, particularly when they started trading, uh, so bringing in immigrants and doing a lot of trade, particularly after the Bowring Treaty and the invention of the steamship. So the first mosque was built, wooden structure, built where Customs House is, then it got shifted to where the site is today, which we're going to go and walk to now. So the original so the original building was the customs house. It again got moved to where it is today. Uh, but then the wooden structure was replaced with what it is today, which is the concrete, concrete structure. Or rather brick and lime. So the community where it was built was actually called Ton Samurong. So the community, actually that community has in, in that it doesn't exist today, but the mosque still does. Anyway, I'll finish my beer and I'll take you there. There's a nice little soy here. We've got some uh, cool cafes, some antique shop. Another cooking school here. It's called Silom Thai Cooking. Uh, there's a couple of little guest houses as well. This is a nice little street here. I like it. Ooh, ramen place. I do love my. I do love ramen. This looks like a cool spot here. I'm not hungry right now, but I'm going to uh, I'll drop a bookmark on my Google Maps and come back to this place. Now, coincidentally, the artist that we're who's done the street art is actually a Japanese artist. I've just uh, looked online. There's a lot of red and black kind of color schemes that he uses. So it's going to be 
I'm looking for it now. Damn it! Look where the artwork is. Beautiful artwork here. Um, a whole whole wall there, and it's blocked off. Damn it! Motomichi Nakamura is the artist's name. I'm a bit annoyed I can't get to see that. Hang on, a little gap there in the fence. I'll see if I can sneak through. Someone sleeps here, a couple of mattresses here. A bit too overgrown, I'm a bit too scared of snakes to get any closer. I don't know about that street art, I'm a big fan of uh, his work and his colour schemes. It's just, uh, it's not really appreciated around here. Very cool art deco style buildings around this neighborhood. something you see a lot in Bangkok a lot of uh, Hindu shrines around the place one of the most famous is Erawan Shrine which is you know, right near Central World one of the big shopping malls in Bangkok and it's very active there's lots of people there uh, worshipping and praying but these are yeah dotted all over the city Hindu shrine you know, passing a lot of suit shops and a lot of uh, jewelry stores as well I feel I am getting close to the Chao Phraya River Kind of a throwback to the old olden days when uh, the trading of fabrics and gemstones uh, what kind of two important industries that kind of built the that built this community up and really put it on the map and more and more cannabis shops are popping up around town now I'm getting close to Harun Mosque it's just around the corner this is Charon Grong Road which is quite a famous road and runs parallel to the Chapra River. Okay, as I walk past this really cool wall, uh, I can see I'm approaching the French Embassy. And it is such a unique uh, building. I'll get a bit of footage of that and then I'll show you the mosque. Ooh, and some cool street art as well. This kind of thing really captures my imagination. It's a painting depicting the early days of the Chow Prayer River. We've got the pier here, all the different uh, ships coming in, bringing in people, goods, trading goods. We've got the elephants. So much greenery around the place as well. I really love these kind of images. This is on the wall of the French Embassy. We've actually got quite a few uh, scenes. They're all of France, except for that one, which is my favorite. Here's some really cool artwork by the Thai artist called Alex Face. And he's got unique style which is you'll see all over Thailand uh, really uh, even in prominent positions so he's one of uh, Thai's Thailand's greatest street artist 
I love this piece here, particularly up the top here. Kind of explosion at the top. A bit hard to capture it because of the, uh, the sun's behind it, but I'll do my best. This is Harun Mosque and I just read that they've taken some of the timber from the original mosque and they've used it in here. Um, now one thing that's quite striking, I've been visited a couple of temples today and also the Hindu shrine, Hindu temple and now at the mosque, if I'm to do a comparative religious study, it's amazing how little decoration there are in uh, mosques. So the others are just filled with images, imagery, stories, um, uh, murals and things. But here, it's completely plain. Uh, from what I understand, that's so, there's no idol worship kind of thing. It's, it's the closer connection to Muhammad. Uh, no images at all. It's quite obvious when I'm doing like a day trip around. I think it's perhaps I'm staying the obvious to, to, to you. But that's just one thing that struck me plainness of it. it doesn't not distract detracting from the spiritual nature of the place just an aesthetic observation So the mosque itself had had a lack of, uh, say, aesthetics and design and colour and uh, artefacts. But outside, there's this old wooden building, which is truly spectacular. I don't know how old it is, but it's so intricate and interesting. But also, also outside this area, there's a lot of uh, places, small restaurants as well. This looks like it would be an excellent place to come at night time. There's some dining. In fact, I've just seen a little map that talked about dining options here in Harun, the Harun Mosque area. In the Harun Mosque area. But look at that building, it's just spectacular. Okay, time to move on. We're gonna visit one more mosque, which is just a five minute walk away. And I'll tell you all about that when I get there. So as I leave Harun Mosque, I'm heading, I'm passing the French embassy here. And I'm just about to get to Assumption Cathedral, a famous and significant Catholic uh, cathedral here in Bangkok. However, I'm not going to go into detail about that uh, cathedral and Catholicism in this video, basically because I've already covered it. I covered it in a series which was uh, like the colonial, it was called a video series called the Colonial Period of uh, Banrak area. And that's where I visited Assumption Cathedral and talked about that. I also visited the Holy Rosary Church as well in the Munrup district. So if you're inter interested in that, I highly recommend those videos to you. The architecture around this area is just stunning. Keep your eyes open. So, so many unique kind of buildings. So this artwork here, this street art, is actually uh, a UNICEF piece and it's all about breastfeeding, supporting breastfeeding. The story goes here, 
when children are breastfed, not only they receive the best food, but also love, warmth, caring touch that helps them flourish. What a lovely piece. What a lovely scent.